For the last century, our waistlines have been expanding like a baker's dough left overnight. There have been many suggestions as to why, such as the energy balance hypothesis, the carbohydrate-insulin model, and others. Today we'll explore one such suggestion which was recently published in Obesity by Richard J. Johnson et al. It's called the Fructose Survival Hypothesis as a Mechanism for Unifying the Various Obesity Hypotheses. This hypothesis makes an attempt at connecting all the previous hypotheses together. Please remember that we're talking about a hypothesis, which is like a scientific hunch. It is not yet conclusively proven, or even widely accepted as fact. Nevertheless, it may well be correct, and does indeed seem to explain a lot of what we've been observing when it comes to how easy it is to put on unwanted pounds in this day and age. First, we need to talk a little bit about ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Our body uses ATP to store chemical energy. When the energy is used, the ATP turns into a chemical called ADP, adenosine diphosphate. The energy stored in ATP is used by our body for pretty much everything. Normally, an animal tries to keep the ATP levels in its cells at a constant level. If an animal or a human eats too much food and the body thinks it has sufficient ATP, it will instead store the extra energy as fat or the energy will be burned off through increased activity, like maybe toe tapping. If too little is eaten, then the body takes energy from its fat stores to keep the ATP levels constant. And then comes fructose, a sugar that's primarily found in fruit, strutting into the cellular club like it owns the place, and oh boy does it throw a spanner in the works. It lowers the ATP levels in the cells and reduces the body's ability to make more ATP, the low ATP levels signal the body to look for more food. There is some evidence to support this. In experiments on humans, it was found that drinking fructose can lower the ATP in the liver by 20%. This at least in part explains why many people experience hunger a short while after eating a sugary snack. If you cave into the hunger induced by the low ATP, and eventually you probably will, you'll tend to overeat and the extra energy will be stored as fat, because the body thinks that the fat stores are low. And why does it think the fat stores are gone? Because your ATP levels are low, which was actually caused by ingesting too much fructose. Another way that fructose causes weight gain is through leptin resistance. In experiments, they would give animals fructose and see what would happen. For the first few weeks, the animals would eat less, so that despite being given fructose, they would be eating the same number of calories as before. After a few weeks, though, the animals would start eating more than they needed which resulted in them gaining weight. The scientists running the experiment did some tests and found that the animals being given the sweets had developed leptin resistance. You might ask, why didn't they do this test on humans? The answer is quite simple. It's unethical to intentionally give humans leptin resistance. But what is leptin, you say? Leptin is a hormone that's produced by your body fat. It sends a signal to your brain to let you know that you have enough energy stored. Simply put, your body uses leptin to maintain its weight, but leptin resistance messes up the system. You no longer feel full. This is bad news if you're trying to maintain your weight. It's the fructose that causes the leptin resistance, if you eat too much of it. And then once you have leptin resistance, you don't feel full, so you tend to overeat. And you might even consume more fructose, making the problem even worse. And on top of that, when you have leptin resistance, you tend to crave high-fat foods, which makes you gain weight all the faster. As you may know, many of the sugars we eat and drink contain both fructose and glucose. Table sugar, for instance, is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. High fructose corn syrup, used in many sweet foods because it is cheap, is 55% fructose and 45% glucose. Clearly, if we believe that fructose is worse for your body than glucose, then we should avoid high fructose corn syrup. But what if we were to consume only glucose? Even if we somehow managed that, we would not be saved. Our body has a way of converting glucose into fructose, or at least a portion of it. It then tends to cause obesity via overeating by the methods already mentioned for fructose. Realistically, the best solution to avoid obesity is to reduce our sugar. Exactly how much isn't clear from this paper, but the usual recommendation is to eat less than 25 grams of added sugar a day. This places little to no restriction upon fruits and vegetables unless you're adding extra sugar to them. This study doesn't talk about it, 
But fruits and vegetables, when you eat them as whole food, have extra fiber and nutrients in them, unlike drinking a can of soda, which has no fiber and very little nutrition. One study on rats looked at how large an effect sugar can be. They fed a bunch of rats a diet high in sucrose, which is roughly 50% glucose and 50% fructose, but at a calorie deficit. Even though they were in a calorie deficit, the rats got fatty liver, elevated triglycerides, insulin resistance, and high blood pressure. They were also slowly developing diabetes. So what does that mean for us humans? Have you ever heard of metabolic syndrome? A syndrome which had rarely been seen before the 1950s? It's when you have high body fat, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, and insulin resistance. This is almost exactly what was seen in the rats, given a high sugar diet. This suggests that we humans can probably develop metabolic syndrome, even in a calorie deficit if we consume too much sugar. So a similar recommendation comes in here as well. Eat less sugar. It even turns out that too much salt in your popcorn can be a problem. Specifically, high levels of salt intake can cause your body to generate more fructose. It's little surprise, then, that studies have shown that diets high in salt are associated with obesity and the development of metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and fatty liver. They go on to explain that there are other consequences of too much fructose in your body. These include hypertension, coronary artery disease, certain cancers, behavioral disorders, and dementia. The fructose survival hypothesis presents fructose as the crafty culprit disrupting our cell's energy balance, duping our bodies into storing more fat by lowering ATP levels and hijacking our hunger signals. Leptin, the hormone that should tell us enough's enough, gets ignored when there's too much fructose for too long a period, setting the stage for overeating and cravings for more calorie-dense foods. Further stirring the pot is the unsettling partnership between fructose and salt, revealing an unsavory alliance that can wreak havoc on our metabolism. And while the plot of this dietary drama thickens with the potential for serious health consequences like metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease, this hypothesis suggests that all we really need to do is moderate our consumption of sugar and salt.